Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. On this video tutorial, we are going to get started making the first fall banner, fall, excuse me, table runner of a few that we'll be making. So I'm super excited about it. Um, as you're hopping on, I'd love to know if you're here, if you're watching. Um, so say something, let me know that you're here. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to ask, feel free to sprinkle, 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 all that normal stuff. Okay, so let me show you up close. And I did get pictures. This is what we're making. <laughs> I know it doesn't look very pretty, but I've worked it all out and I'll share this picture in the comments when I'm all done for those of you that want to know what the, um, measurements of everything are. We're making a table runner that will have a creamy uh, canvas duck cloth body. It'll have uh, ruffles on either end that are made out of the blue and cream ticking. It's going to have a little band uh, made out of just some ticking and then it's going to have a pumpkin and two leaves on each side. I'm not sure whether we're going to stuff them or make them three-dimensional or not. We're just gonna have to kind of see. So, this is where we'll be going. And if you've been watching DIY Dreaming for any amount of time, then you probably saw the table runners that I did two, two years ago of just the little carrots. And then, or maybe it wasn't two years ago. I don't know, it's been a while. And then last Easter, we did a whole bunch of adorable table runners using canvas drop cloth and, um, bunnies and stuffed Easter eggs and oh, super cute. So these are our supplies. This is ticking blue and cream from Walmart. This is canvas duck cloth, also from Walmart. Both of these are in the fabric department. They're both um, roughly around five to six dollars a yard. I know you can find them elsewhere, but that's what we'll mostly be using. And then we're gonna be using this adorable, it's already starting to look yucky because I've used it so much. This adorable fall leaf stencil. Um, some of these adorable, I think it's called fall fantasy uh, leaves stencil. We'll be using blue ink. And then this is my pattern <laughs> for a pumpkin that we're gonna make. So let's start at the very beginning and just know that we're really only going to work on one side of it. Um, I will this evening finish it up uh, off camera and I'll give you all the scoops. Okay, and before I actually start, I do want to show you one thing because I'm getting started also working on some beautiful pillows. And this is the one that I made this morning using blue ink, the Magnolia Pillow Form pillow case thing, and that same uh, fall leaves all over pattern stencil. Pretty, huh? So the, the um, table runner, everything's going to coordinate. All right, so the first thing to do is to let you know that I cut, well, I tore, <laughs> I tore my um, blue and cream ticking uh, from one side to the other, so you can see the selvage edge. And I tore it, I'm just looking at my measurements, um, 17 inches long. To do that, you just do a little snip with scissors and then you just tear, okay? So I have two of these. All right, and what I did before I came live, which I'm gonna just show you for two seconds and then I'll show you the one that I have ready, is I just took a sewing needle and some cream colored thread and I just did, um, it's, it's called a lot of different things. It's either called a running stitch, a basting stitch, a gathering stitch, that kind of thing. Okay, so then I just went in and out at every stripe and about a half an inch into it. And I went all the way across. So you can see, I'm not going to make you watch that, it's boring. And then you just cinch it up, okay? Easy, easy, easy peasy. One other thing I do want to point out is that before I cut my thread, or before I was finished, I took my little ruffle and I folded it in half and I put a pin to mark exactly where the half 
point is because I what I we're using hot glue to attach it I want to know where the center is and then I centered each piece of this as well so I know where the center where the fourth is I hope that will make sense I'll show you on the real one well the one that I've been working on okay so I'll just get this marked so it's all ready to go for me this evening okay so this is the start I have a needle and thread I'm doing a gathering or basting stitch whatever you want to call that can you see that um, about a half inch down I've marked the center point and I've marked um, the fourth on either side okay so this is the one that I did before I came live and you can see it has those pins in it you can see here's the halfway and what we're going to do is we're going to work on first of all on getting it attached to the end of one of our um, sides for our little uh, drop cloth table runner. Okay, and you could do this with a sewing machine or you could do this with um, a sewing needle and thread by hand or you can do it with hot glue. I'm gonna do the hot glue method because I know a lot of you guys out there might wanna do this and um, you, <sighs> Maybe you um, don't have a sewing machine or you don't really know very well how to hand sew, but you know how to use a hot glue gun. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, and I went up, was it on this side? It must be on the other side, Let me flip it over. Hmm, well I can't see where it was. I marked, oh here it is, yeah. Okay, so I'm using a ruler and I just used a pencil to mark how high up I want to be hot gluing my um, ruffle on. This will all make sense, but watch to the very end. And I marked, um, I think, an inch and a half just so that I know. This is going to be hidden, but this will tell me how high to glue it. And also I wanna mark the center point. Okay, so this is what I have just in pencil marks on my fabric. There goes my pencil, oh well. All right, just in case you didn't know, if you're watching, and these comments here are in your way, you should be able to swipe them either side to side or up and down, and then they should disappear. And then if you decide you want them back, go the opposite direction, just, just to let you know. Okay, so in case you are just joining me, this is what we're making. It's gonna be an awesome blue and cream themed table runner. Okay, I'm gonna take my midpoint of my ruffled, um, piece of fabric and I am let's see I'm gonna start with that in the center ow <laughs> I've already poked myself about five times ow I don't want to get glue all over everything. Okay, and then I'm going to take the ends. And you guys, if you can think of a better method for doing this um, that was going to work better for you, then by all means, I am kind of one of those crafters that is a jack of all trades. So I do a lot of different things. Maybe, you know, pretty mediocre. I don't know. But, um... But I, I try things, I do things, and so do this project in a way that you think looks good and don't feel like you have to do it exactly the way I'm doing it if you don't like this way. Okay, so now I'm just kinda getting my ruffles so they're fluffed up and I'm gonna do one quick little pass 
to put some glue on here and poke it into it. I'll come back off camera and glue it all down really well. I don't know why I have that pit right there. I do want to do a good job though because I'm going to be giving this away. I'm not sure exactly what the criteria are going to be for that yet, but I will let you know as soon as I figure it all out. Okay, so we can we can fluff this later. I really just want to get it on because um, this is the least exciting part of this project. And I'll, also I want to show you the, what the underneath of it will look like. So, um, I got started making table runners um, about, I don't know, about two and a half years ago. And I made my first table runner using painter's drop cloth. And I put two rows of ruffles on it. We did ro rolled rosettes. I have to dig that out because I didn't give that one away. Um, and it turned out so amazing. So ever since I did that, I'm like, you know, you can make table runners for every season in every color, every style, just about that you might want. Super affordably, just using either canvas duck cloth like this or painter's drop cloth. Um, so I love making these. Oops, that's really not very good ruffled. I love making this kind of stuff and um, yeah, I love making this kind of stuff, especially when I know that I'm gonna be giving it away. This, is, this part is a little awkward. It's like I'm wrestling a giant snake or something, I don't know, but just want to get the basics of it on. So I can show you the really fun part, which is the decoration part. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's see. And like I said, I will come back after and fluff everything up really good. And where I need to fix some of the um, ruffles so that they're more even, I'll just pull it off and re-stick it down. Okay, do I have any other pins on here? Yes, I do. That one was hiding. Is there one hiding here? Okay, so this is what we have so far. Can you believe how easy that was? And this is what the back of it looks like. But don't worry, nobody's going to see that. The um, painter's drop cloth uh, um, table runner that I made a few years ago, we made it multi so it had two sides, and it was really awesome. Okay, so this is where we are. And I did iron everything to make it neat, <laughs> which it's all messed up now, but... Um, Okay, so the next thing is I want to show you what we'll be using to decorate our project. And I told you before I got started that I ha had this pumpkin template, which I'll measure it, but this is just totally free-handed. There's nothing special about it. And before I came live, I took this awesome stencil, which is fast becoming a favorite. And if you want to link to this, let me know. I'm thinking this one and the one that says uh, Happy Fall, that these two, I would think they're going to sell out. So if you think you want this one, or any of the other fall stuff, I would grab it soon. So let me know if you want a link. Anyways, I just took it and put it on a piece of this same canvas, and I used the navy blue ink. And with the magic of TV, this is what I got. So we're gonna use this. This is like we've created our own piece of fabric in the colors that we need. We are going to use our pattern we're going to figure out exactly where we want to lay it down and cut it out. And I was looking at this 
because the leaves are going all different directions. Honestly, I don't think it matters, <laughs> but I do want it to have some cute leaves and things on it. So this is how I usually do this when I make my own patterns. And I'll measure it in just a second. I'm just pinning it onto my piece of canvas duck. Okay, let's see. This pumpkin is almost eight inches wide, and from the top of the stem to the bottom, it's five and a half inches high. All right, and where are my big scissors? They're here somewhere, hiding underneath all my stuff. Okay, the other thing I wanna tell you with this is that when it was dry, I took a hot iron and a piece of um, parchment paper and I heat set it just with a hot iron, no steam for three or four minutes, just ironing over and over and over it. Okay, why did I do that? Well, it's not because I'm afraid this will get washed in the washing machine, because if you wash it in the washing machine, the whole thing's gonna fall apart. So don't do that. But I would hate for somebody to set something wet or a food that had steam or something nearby it <clears throat> and for this to have any chance of coming off. So that's why I heat set it, and it's permanent. And that's something really cool about working with the inks from Magnolia is that you can heat set them and then they're permanent. Okay. We're gonna use the rest of this, I will, afterwards, to make another pumpkin for the other side. But we're just working on this one side right now. Okay. I want to move this so I don't accidentally cut my table runner. This does not have to be precise. So fabric wise, although I don't know exactly, I would guess that each one of these table runners, and we're gonna be doing multiple different designs and styles over the next month or so. This won't be the only one that we make. Um, but I would guess that you have, when we're all, everything said and done, maybe eight, maybe a yard and a half, maybe, well, if you, depending on how you do the length of it, I don't know, maybe $10. I, I can't say for absolute certain because uh, I don't know what price it will be if you go to buy some of this fabric, but it's not an expensive project at all. And it is fun to have something like this in the colors that you like. Not everybody's doing blue for fall. I'm just doing it for fun this year. Um, but it's fun to make something like this and have it. And when people come over, or your family, they say, wow, I love your table runner. You can say, thanks, I made it. Can you believe that? And they're gonna say, wow, that's amazing. They really are. Okay. I don't have enough hands. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna hang on to my pattern. I don't want to lose it because I have to cut out one more pumpkin with it. And here's our pumpkin. So I'm just gonna lay it on here for a second because I have to decide something important. Do we want the stripe, which I created just by tearing a strip of this? Do we want the stripe first or do we want the stripe up here? Or do we not want the stripe at all? I don't know, maybe I don't want the stripe at all. I'm not sure. So let's just go on from this. Okay, I am not going to be too fussy about this, but I do want it to be sort of centered. So let me just see. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I'm just gonna put, I'm not gluing the whole thing down because I have not committed yet 
whether I want to stuff it. We'll try that and see what we think. Where did my glue stick go? So I didn't say any of my normal stuff. Yeah, Brenda says no stripe. I, I haven't decided. A lot of times I just kind of have to start the project and see what it looks like and, and think about it a little bit. So I may not do a stripe at all. And I may end up stuffing this pumpkin, I'm not sure. Um, anyways, I'm just gluing right around the outside of it. And we'll go clear down to the bottom and then we'll leave it open and I'll show you what it looks like with some stuffing in it. I did that with the bunnies on the Easter table runners that we made this spring and it was adorable. And I do have some other pieces to go on to this that are super cute also. So let's just go down just a smidge further. Okay, let me hold this up and let you see. I'm trying not to make the rest of my tape, table runner be a complete wrinkled mess is what I'm trying to do here. Okay, so then the next thing is also before I came live, I took this adorable stencil which is these leaves, these fall leaves that have designs on them. And I stenciled it on a piece of canvas duck. And I got this. So we're gonna cut these out and lay them, you know, winky wonky on either side of the pumpkin. And they're gonna, and I'm gonna make a whole nother set of this for the other side. So and I'm just gonna do kind of a wide cut around them because they're not super huge. And the fabric around them will disappear into the canvas. So if I decide that I want to stuff them, then I'm giving myself the leeway to do that. So I want to know in the comments, Tell me, would you ever consider using blue as your color theme for fall or Thanksgiving? This, um, this table runner could be used, you know, all fall. And so it could be used for Thanksgiving, um, I think. For me, I haven't used blue before as my theme for fall, and so I just felt like doing something different. Um, I do want to show you the pumpkins in case you've missed that DIY. Um, here's, here are a couple of them. Aren't they cute? And also I'm working, I don't have it quite finished yet or ready to teach, but I'm also working on making some blue and cream little stuffed acorns, which when I get that all perfected, I will share. Okay, so let's just finish cutting these out. I may trim them a little bit smaller, I don't know. So tell me in the comments, um, would you ever consider using blue as your theme for fall? Or have you used an unusual color before that isn't, you know, your orange and, and you know, maroon and sage and all those typical fall colors. So tell me that, sorry. Okay, so let me just cut out this last one. We're gonna glue it on, not fully. We'll look at what this could look like stuffed. And then I will finish working on it. I'll make some decisions 
and I may come back live later this afternoon. I have to come back anyways for another thing. So I may, if I can get it accomplished, I'll come back and show you that this afternoon. If not, it'll be first thing in the morning. But I want to know what you guys think about this color, this theme, and I want to know, like, what's the most daring that you have been or would you be daring to use something like blue as your theme for fall, for your fall decor? Okay, good enough. Okay, so I have these little leaves and I would probably put the ones that look like maple leaves um, on opposite sides. And then, I don't know, I have to figure out how I would want to have these laying. But let me show you what it could look like if we stuck that pumpkin. And we could also stuff the leaves if we decide to do that. I think I'm going to stuff it. <laughs> it looks so cute already. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I think I'll definitely be stuffing it. And probably the leaves too. So, I don't know, maybe I don't do the two ones on the same side. I'm not sure, and I know this is upside down, but that is pretty much what I wanted to show you for right now, just the start of this plan for a blue and cream with ticking uh, table runner. Um, thank you so much for the stars, that's so nice of you. Uh, if you have questions, if you want links to blue ink, these leaf, Things. They're called Fall Fantasy or this bigger one, which is called Fall Leaves Pattern. Let me know that in the comments and I'll get it for you right away so you don't have to look around or hunt these things down. I can give you a direct link. Um, the fabrics all came from Walmart in the fabric department, but you can get blue ticking everywhere and you can get canvas duck cloth everywhere too. So I hope you liked this project. It's not finished, but we're going along and I'll um, let you know what further decisions I make and what I decide to do with it. How functional will it be stuffed? Well, these are gonna be towards the end of the table or depending on the length of your table actually hanging off. Oh, and I'm so glad I saw that comment because I wanted to mention that you can make these any width you want for example, if you have a fall, you have a, a hall entry table that you want to do something on. So it could be any width, any length to work with what you want to put it on. Or maybe you have a buffet or some other kind of like a TV stand or something in your family room that you want to um, create it for. So keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be for a kitchen table or a dining room table. It could be for whatever you would want to do. I wouldn't put stuffed pumpkins in the very center because that's where you're going to want to put your food but this is purely um, for decoration so it's not going to get washed in the washing machine you're going to use it and be careful <laughs> you know and then uh, when it's in terrible shape in a couple of years or if you spill something on it you just make a new one alrighty well thank you guys so much for watching Again, let me know if you want links. I will keep working on this and I will um, come back to you with some more decisions of what I'm going to do with it. And um, so just be watching for that. And I will see you guys uh, again later this afternoon. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Martha. She says, love, love, love. It's beautiful. I so appreciate that. Brenda, I'll get you the links in just a few minutes. Looks absolutely beautiful. You use light blue, green, and burgundy for fall. You could so do that. Magnolia has all these different colors of ink. And the inks have the white top. So you, what I love about this is you can totally customize it. 
Uh, Carla, if you just caught the end, I would recommend that as soon as I wrap up here, that you go back to the beginning and watch it on replay because I have measurements and everything at the beginning. And I'll get you links as well, Carla, thanks. Okie dokie, folks. I can't wait to um, get this rocking and rolling and get you pictures. I want to know what you guys think. All right, see you later.